so the first thing that we should do is to fix the broken thing, which is this. Right. Holy shit. Um, so how? what's the best way of doing this? Doing this? Because this is only... Oh, let's, do, let's do something here that I think will make our life easy. Sure. Let's make a file called the movement. And then we move everything related to movement there. Okay, so movement. That seems a bit arbitrary. Yes. Um, so how do I do the namespacing thing? Uh, you well, okay, just you namespace. don't. Yeah, you don't need to in this case, but just do, just do it for the sake of. No, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> There's a keyword. Like, you need to work. You, <laughs> <laughs> you need to work with modules, right? You can do namespaces and modules if you want. On the same file. No, no, you will need modules. If you want namespaces or not, that's a thing, but you cannot leave out uh, no, you, modules, you can right? just make things in a file and import the, the things. Yeah, yeah, if you create modules, right? Well, they are already modules, but what I mean oh, is yeah, you need are, to export, import. Uh, yeah, but just do these things. Just do namespace. I don't know. And then you do whatever. Like player. Yeah. Like what you need to do is before namespace, you do something like export namespace. Oh, yeah. Well, ju just put spark before the thing. I think it yeah, will work. Anything that you plan to use. Oh, just ignore this export and we add it later. O only what we're going to need. But... Okay. So it's going to be namespace and then I'm going to put uh, movement. I don't know. I think it would be better, like, movement is already the file, right? So put something like a player. So we do the movement of the player or something like this. Okay. But okay. that... Is that like this? Mm. Yeah, something like this. Like, and then you can do enemy. And then, oh, if they share a function, then you do another namespace. Okay, that, that, that loses a bit of the point of the namespacing if you're not using movement. Because even though it's the name of the file, it doesn't... How can I say it? You will not have that namespace just because of the module, right? Just because it is the name of the file, yeah, different it, from yeah, like I, a, I just don't want to. to I, well, I, I for that example, was never the intent. Well, then why do you need namespaces? It's not because you want namespaces. What I mean is, My you can use the namespace movement. I don't care about having movement. I care about having a file named movement that I can hmm. import by saying movement.ts. Sure. Player. You see? Yeah, I see. That doesn't matter, man. I, I'm totally being arbitrary here. Okay, so in here we're going to put some functions. That's my understanding. Uh... Yeah, like things that move the player, the enemies. Yeah, so movement. Which is... Drex B. Um, where is the, yeah, this, okay, thank you, uh, oops, okay, so now we need to discover how I am moving the thing, uh, <laughs> oh, the move was encapsulated with an action, so I think what you're proposing is to separate them, is that right, Magita? Oh, I see, what, yeah, mm -hmm. so this is actually doing the movement and whatever action that we need. So then uh, the question wouldn't is... Better, wouldn't it be better breaking the types first? Like that we have on the beginning, the records? Bringing... You, you're talking about bringing these. Yeah, like all of these. Okay, so the in terms of the player, what is important? The player, which I believe mm -hmm. it is somewhere. Spaceship. Spaceship. So let's bring that there. Okay, so you have the spaceship, which is the player, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, then the question is, coordinates is something that we share among enemies, projectiles and players. Where should, mm -hmm. do, should, where should this live? Well, in a generic file, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, in this case, you just have movement for now, so you should make another file, I guess, to put this there. Or another namespace. Let's do the following. 
break just in multiple namespaces inside movement, and then later we break movement into many other files. Okay. So namespace, uh, what's this gonna be? This is gonna be where we put the the common things throughout the all the entities. Yeah. yeah so you common. Can put like, yeah, something like this. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna bring this to there. Okay, cool. Um, I'm assuming we're also gonna have namespaces for the things. So namespace for the enemy. Uh, there's a problem here already. Does the other matter? No. Okay, but I'm gonna put here in anyway. So here I'm assuming I'm gonna have to do common dot. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Cool. If, but here's the problem. You need to export. Export the namespace or the type? Well, the, here's the thing. The, you export the namespace if you want to open this file in another thing, so you access the namespace. You put it there, and then you can access the type inside the namespace, you see? So if I export the namespace, do I need to export the, type, the things inside? Yes. Okay, makes sense. In this particular instance that you said. Uh... So let's in put this case, there. in this particular case, you wouldn't need to export the namespace. Yeah, no, but I think we're gonna use it in the file on the left. No, yeah, just yeah. Um, I kind of want instead of the having proper names, we just put entity. What do you think? Oh, well, the name is already on the namespace, right? So you can name it D. Oh no. <laughs> Stop. Stop <laughs> it. Open oh, it's better than that. <laughs> okay, so the enemy has those. Uh, namespace projectile. What are we going to do with things that uh, they interact with multiple stuff at once? We're going to decide which one will have them? Mm, what do you mean? Yeah, so for instance, we have functions that interact with all of those at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and currently, uh, be, uh, we don't have namespaces, so that that was not a problem before, of like separation of concerns and stuff. But now we're gonna have that. Yeah. Uh, so then the question is, where we're gonna have to decide which one of the namespaces will, we're gonna put that. That doesn't does that make sense? Yes. But okay. Export. Yeah. Okay. So just just to be sure. That we're gonna have to have that. We're gonna have to discuss about that. So entity. Okay. Okay. So this is a function called give me, which is basic. Are we using give me by the way? Give me. We are. I think it's just a test function, isn't it? It is a function that receives unit and. Um, are we using give yeah, me somehow? I Aside from calling. This is for testing, I, I recall. Okay, so let's go back. Let's remove this. Uh, a weapon only makes sense in the... Oh no, enemies can have weapons as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna actually have to have another one in here. Name, space, um, weapon. Oops. And, and then we can do s stuff like that. Yep, that makes sense. Um, what else? We have a state. State is already a namespace, so I'm just gonna move this from here. Okay. And then we have the type game. I think that this type only makes sense inside state. Does that make sense or no? Game. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so here we start having the problem. So here we're gonna have to do player dot entity. Mm -hmm. Here we're gonna have to do enemy dot entity. That's much better because we know where things are coming from. Entity. Yeah, I, I must say so. <laughs> The game needs to be instantiated in the game in the main game loop, so we need to export these. 
Um, are we using this type? This type? State dot done. I think we are. Um, so let's put that in here. And let's call this uh, internal state. So internal state could, could be state dot done or state dot going. Done mm -hmm. is here, going is there. That is here, okay. So far so good. Now we have this. This is a function that lives inside the namespace of the player. So let's I recommend that. having the LSP by the way. Yeah, but the LSP this LSP really annoys me because the error messages are just like bloated. The, yes, but the point is having knowledge of where it is failing. It's not even like reading what it gives you because it doesn't give you anything. I see what you mean. Uh, when I am inside a namespace, I don't need to do the. I, I can just do this, right? Yeah. Cool. Como? If you had to define it, it would be really. Stupid. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You said it is very bare bones, so. Uh, what you, is this returning? You know the, you know the, the union pipe? TypeScript. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. You can mm -hmm. pass something like, for example, bool or string. So you can do bool, like boolean, and then pipe, string. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of, it's the kind of stuff you can do. Other things that are weird, for example, like if you export, if you make an alias, it will not export the, the. I think that's the default behavior. I don't know if you can change it. On the TS config, but imagine like this, you make an alias uh, of a string to a name, let's say, it, and then you get an error message with a function that uses name as a parameter, mm -hmm. and then you will see the, in the error message like it will not say something like, "Oh, name parameter is wrong" or something like this. It will it will spit it will vomit for you string is not expected and it will be okay where is the heck is a string and then you will discover that's because the alias they they do like uh they reduce the type to the thing that the primitive before showing to the user so you oh. type the alias, <laughs> there are we... other problems like for example in f sharp Okamo, you cannot well come i don't know how to move, do private stuff but for example do you agree that if you don't add the export it's kind of private some people disagree with that but i agree with you if you don't add the export to this well it should be private the 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 full behavior in this case if it's if it's requesting to be explicit about yeah, it yeah 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 uh, in f sharp if you do like by default it is not private but you can add the word private and then if you do uh, and you try to add another type that uses a lower level type inside of it, like a record, for example, that has a member of a type A, and the type A is private, then it doesn't let you uh, do the expose the other type because, well, part of it is private. Mm -hmm. TypeScript does that? How what? Question. Do you think TypeScript does that? <laughs> Cares about it? <laughs> I don't think so. Yes, it doesn't. Okay, so if we, we I hit the first roadblock here. So we have a function called fire that receives a game and returns a game. And what I think this is doing is actually updating... Um, <laughs> and I don't send a thing. By the main string. And then it said... Name is equals name name fun and then one is expect the type name string. Yes, that's that's okay because it says yes. that it's a string, but it's so it shows the type the user typed. Yeah, we had this discussion with Silver Air as well. Like, should we should we tell the like we shouldn't tell the error of the what we are reducing and 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 what is the other name that we call reducing and equivalent right if the if the type is equivalent equivalent to one to the other one we should still keep the original one that the user typed because that's the way it works it it's makes the way sense the person has in her head in their head right like 
somebody fought like this. Yeah. But anyway, let's see. So, what's the problem with fire? This fire function is grabbing all the player, is grabbing the player and all the projectiles, mm -hmm. and it is actually. Uh... Oh, this is spawning a projectile from the player. Okay, so this should live in the player. Uh, why? Because this is actually using the player's coordinates, you doing uh, some math. Yeah, but in the future, every entity should have a fire method, right? Not, no, not every entity, because projectiles, they don't fire all the projectiles. That would okay, be weird. Entity, I talk, I talk about, like, the... Oh, actually, that, that, that doesn't Wait, make sense. Are you choosing OOP above of pattern matching? If we are using OOP atop of pattern matching? No, no, instead. instead of. Could you explain that more, Nathan? Yeah, you can either <laughs> use methods fire in oh. your stuff, or you can make a type, and the fire <laughs> function match that and, and does whatever, right? If that's a good one to go OOP. Well... Yeah, I get it. I would. It, it, what I would do is make an interface. <laughs> and then. <laughs> oh, no, but yeah, it's the same, dude. Actually, now that I think about it, we can actually. It kind of. It can make sense that the projectile shoots more projectiles because maybe the weapon is like you shoot once like and frozen, then. Like yes, bomb. exactly. Exactly. So this actually would be, as you said, every single entity. Projectile, uh, well, not weapon. But even if that's the case, like, it wouldn't need to, right? We could just make something like an interface and make enemy and player inherit the interface, you see? Like, implement the interface. Actually, we can make, I think we can make it better. We can make only the weapon to fire. And then everybody else needs to have weapons to fire. Yeah, okay. But that's kind of breaking the purpose <laughs> of having the, the thing, right? But that's fine. Breaking what, sorry? Uh, in this case, it would work, but I'm saying, like, I think we're gonna face some other thing that we are gonna have to specialize and do this thing anyway. Okay, but for now, I, I think that's actually a good a good um, time to finally uncomment this. So the now this can have an entity. Export on that. And this is a fine method. Like, I don't blame the, the thing because it inferred the type of the function, right? That it was expecting. Wait, what? Like, in the case you sent, I think that's fine because it is inferring the type in basis of the F, not on X. So, okay, it can still be confusing, but I think that's, like, not as bad as it would be. No, oh, okay. The point was not to show that the result is name one or name two type, was to show that it is compatible, even though mm -hmm. it's not a structural type system. Like, it will not complain, oh, name one versus name two, just because the names are different, I will not mm -hmm. check that, right? Uh, common coordinates. And then this actually needs to return a projectile. So projectile entity. Yes. Then in the main game loop, we're gonna have, or somewhere else, I don't know where, we're gonna have to do this logic there of like grab the uh, grab the player, provide the, the coordinates to this function, to the to the weapon of that player. Uh, and then the, the fire will provide you the projectile that you're going to have to update inside the state. That's cool. Okay, so now we're going to do const p, basically this. So it's going to be current coordinates that. And that. And then in here. Uh, I hope I hope it's not indentation uh, sensitive. So uh, projectile, yes. Projectile, yes. And then the return will be p.
Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so I think we removed. So do we have? Are we using the throttle? Because I already forgot. I hope we are. I I don't think we are. <laughs> I think this was our attempt on, but we we didn't get we didn't get it to, to manage to work, and we just uh, um, we didn't ma manage to make it work. Let me actually grab this function here as well. Let's put everything here. Oh man, I just saw an image of Windows XP running Microsoft Visual Studio. Just imagine how cool it would have been <laughs> to code in C sharp. How oh, heavy. <laughs> to code in C sharp in 2001. Just imagine, man. Um, okay, uh, then we have the main game loop, which I, I don't want to touch it right now. Yes, leave it exactly <laughs> as it is. <laughs> no, this is where this the problem lives. Uh, let's go to update presence. So this is actually updating the presence of all the projectiles. So I believe this is this actually needs to be. Hmm, that's a very good question. Where should this live? Uh, what update presence? Yeah, this is grabbing um, all the projectiles and updating that their that their presence. This is what well, do we have a projectile thing? Yes, or state? we do. Uh, this is more like a state function. Yeah, I think this is more like a state function. I agree. So let's grab this. Oops. Let's grab this. And put inside here. At least for now, because it feels wrong. Uh, oh, it's okay, Jimmy. Because it's doing a lot of different stuff. You just cringe, man. <laughs> you just cringe. Uh, export. And then in here we have the entity type game, and we're gonna return a new game. Uh, and we should name rename this to projectile presence. There are some things that we're gonna have to change, such as this. Then there is the function was hit. I think this function will, be, will this would be an interface, right? Was hit. Oh no, this is this is will be in common. Sorry, this will be in common because an enemy can be hit and a player can be hit as well. Uh, is that sick? Like, do you need the definition of of this somewhere else as well? Yeah, I don't. We don't have the definition here. I can actually already put the como. Yeah. And that and that. Yep. Yep. I think that's that's the way. Uh, and then the, this function here. This function grab uh, picks a, a set of coordinates, a width and a height for the hitbox, and it takes a projectile. And returns a boolean. Here. Okay. So then we have export. And here we're going to have to use entity. And then there's another function called is point contained. Which is this one. And it is even more common than the other one. There. Export. Coordinates, coordinates, coordinates. Awesome. Who's next? I think now is movement functions. So these are enemy movement functions. So these should definitely be inside enemy. Export. Oh, but this is inside enemy, but it, 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 it assumes that you have a game. Well, but this is wrong, right? This is only grabbing the first one. We're going to have to change this. Yeah. Uh, export. Okay, so what this actually should do. This should pick an enemy. Right, so an enemy. 
uh, an entity and should return the updated entity uh, and then it's gonna be this uh, e dot current coordinates some math and return the e oops Awesome. Next. Increment coordinates. Oh, this is for the projectile movement. And we have way more than I expected. <laughs> <It's been laughs> yeah, we have a few a few functions. It's already looking more proper just for just by doing this namespaces thing. Uh, export. So update coordinates. I'm gonna you're gonna give me uh, an entity. And I will provide you back the updated entity. That makes sense. We're gonna grab that and then we're gonna update. That's that's exactly what we need. Next, update projectiles. This is actually updating this is a game function. Okay, so we go down here. Uh yep. Um, but this is going to be projectile dot. Yes. Next. Okay, now this is the function of the player m doing things. So we have common and we have player. Uh, export. Okay, so what uh, we should do with that? Uh, we should grab uh, the the entity and ooh, how are we gonna solve this one? Uh, what's the problem? The problem is that before, if I control Z, notice that in here we have the update with action function get uh, uh, asks for a game. And mm -hmm. why does it do that? Because if it fires, in the fire behavior actually needs to happen within the game. Okay. It is it is something outside of the player. Yeah. So the question is, how are we gonna how are we going to do that? Should we keep this update with action function inside the game, name sp the state, game state, in, uh, uh, even though only the player does actions to, to handle this side effect? Or you have a better, we, have a, we come up with a better idea? I think inside state is fine because I, what, else, what I think of state is the entire game state. So any enemy or player that influences or does some action that influences over the game then that should uh, wait lemos are you talking about methods and the state of objects or just like where to put the function in the namespace i think it's the former uh can you show me what is the class slash object that you are yeah so here yeah so here they are they the update with action on, uh, only applies to a player. That's why we do this let in this line. The issue is that if the player sh fires, which is calling this, uh, then this is actually doing side effects uh, within the game, not within the player, although the player sh fires. Sure. So then the question yeah. is, should we put this update with action inside the state namespace? Uh, even though only a player does this, or we come up with a better idea. You can just continue in the player. Yeah, so how are we going like, to handle the side effects if we don't have the game? Uh, I don't know what you mean. For example, the main loop, you have your update shit, and there, depending on what was called, for example, oh, this key was called, then you just, oh, player dot fire, then you pass the state, he will return 
a different state. Like, you are not dealing with objects and oh, modifying what, what we have inside I them. I see what you mean, I see what you mean. So what you're saying is that we can keep this in here, but we maintain the signature the same. Yeah, but need what is this option key? <laughs> Uh, this option key is is the key 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 on the keyboard. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, and there's another gotcha here. So we don't have spaceship anymore. So I think we can just remove this. And yeah, s dot current. Yeah, okay. Okay, the only thing the only thing now that we need to do is to put a weapon within the hands. But how of... are you calling that just just fire? Is that like inside his namespace? No, it's like... gonna be weapon oh. dot fire. But I, I need see. to do actually s this yes that. Um. Yes, 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 yes. Then, um, I don't remember why, but experience is a list of weapons. Do you remember why, Magetta? If the, why it's a list of weapons? Yeah, experience. experience. Yeah. Because you have different kinds of weapon, and each, of the, each one of them level up in a different order. Different <laughs> For example, if the more you use the, in the original game, right? The more you use the weapon, like X, the more you level up because you get more experience to it. Okay, but can uh, I say so that you're... So you could either have the weapons and inside them you have experience or you have experience separate and there you have some reference, like an ID of a weapon or something. Yeah, right now the yeah. weapon contains the experience. <laughs> yeah, in that case it's just... Wait, the weapon has experience. So why I think that's the most normal one, game? right? What, Maggot? But then that shouldn't be experience on the player. Right? Yeah, but that's my question. Weapon. Is the experience of the player the sum of the experience levels of the weapons? No, why would there be an experience? I think this doesn't exist, Lem. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. The player I... has no experience. The weapons do. Oh, okay. So the 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 player oh, the doesn't player inherit the sum. Certain... Yeah, but it's the player. But it's the player using certain weapon, right? Yeah. Um, okay, right now, uh, I'm going to hard code to be the, only the first weapon, because I don't think we're going to add more weapons Excuse now. Uh, so how the fire works, because I changed the, the type signature of that. So the fire grabs the current coordinates of the player and returns a new projectile that needs to be updated within the, the game state. Sure. So let's do that. Uh, so this is going to be new projectile yep and instead of doing that we're gonna just put current coordinates yep and then this fire will generate the projectile for us with the updated coordinates because it do, does some math and now we need to update the game state using um, using that projectile that you just acquired so the code that, that does that is already was already here, but I was stupid enough to delete it. Uh, so let me grab that back um, here. So I'm going to assume this is going to work like that. And then I need to do projectiles equal, well, const. Do I have uh, ignore like this? I don't recall already. Um, this is pattern matching, right? Yeah. So you do, but that's a variable, right? You do, but that's a variable. Yeah, but I don't think that's pattern matching. Oh, oh, you mean... It, because in the original code, it was like this. Yeah, but you're not using player, right? Yeah, I I'm think, not using. I think the way you would do it is underscore and then write player. 
and then everybody ignores. Actually, like, actually, instead of doing wait, that, what do you want to do? Instead of doing that, we don't we don't need to do that actually, Magneto. We can just do a g dot projectiles. And actually, I can do that in here and just nuke this. And then this is actually G. Yep. New G. <laughs> yeah. What is G? The mm -hmm. game. I'm not typing. <laughs> Wait, game state? Yeah, sure. No, no, no. The name of the type is game state or game something else? It is state.game. Actually. Oh. Yeah, it is state dot game. Uh, wow, I'm very impressed how much better it looks just by doing that. What do you have on the state regarding types? Here. The state has an internal state which declares if the game is over or not. And then the game is composed out of a player, a list of yeah, internal enemies. state doesn't say anything, right? No, it's because in the in the main game loop, we're going to ask for... Actually, if we don't want to it's export this... Done. And that could be a Boolean, dude. Yeah, I don't, I don't even recall uh, if we are using this in here. No, we are not yet. Okay, cool. Uh, but you have the game, that you have a player, enemies, projectiles... Oh... What? Yeah, you are using the strings for tags there on done and going, so... Yeah, but the reason why we made it the types is to have this, I think. I mean, dude, that doesn't even... Oh, now I see the done and... Go oh, now oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. You are using those things there. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, what do we have to do now? Because I think we already moved everybody out, everybody from here. Yeah, only the main function lives here. Oh man, this looks, looks much looks much better. <laughs> oh boy, okay. So, do you guys want to... Um, well, we need to make a decision right now. We need to say... Uh, I think Natan mentioned this about in Silverware at some point about making functions that in order to not export unnecessary potentially secret stuff for everybody else. What? Are you sure? Yeah, you you mentioned that in in, re, in some of refactoring session that we should do that, and I agreed with you back then. And I I don't even know what that means. That means that instead of exporting stuff. We make functions that we export that handles uh, abstracts the thing out for every for everybody outside of the module. So, oh. for instance, if you have these, we can just say function create player. Because, for instance, sure. the, the should should we allow the creation of a player be done in the main game loop or the main game loop only? Calls for this. Uh, dude, you cannot do that normally in TypeScript. Uh, what do you mean by you can't do that normally? Because you can always, uh, how do I say? You can always create an object in a specific format and you have the same type as your type that you requires, right? A structural shit. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, because it structurally would be the same, right? Yeah, it doesn't care about where it was created or by whom. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But anyway, I think we should just say, uh, like, return, uh, oops, return an entity here. And then we can do all of this shit that we are doing here and just return that. Uh, so. Uh, by the way, Magetta, do you know what mm -hmm. symbols are in JavaScript? Symbols? No, I didn't even know there was a thing called yeah, symbols. Yeah, they are some kind of like UUID, right? Hmm. But 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 they are a bit different. Uh, 
So maybe you could do that kind of stuff with those symbols in the sense of, okay, it is only the same type if the type has this value symbol, you see? And this symbol is only created by using this function. Oh, you're talking about having like a, a, a VIP credential. That you... Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's only given by you by the creation function, right? Yeah. <laughs> that would be a way to do it. Yeah, that is a way to get around the structural equality that Nathan was talking about. Did you get, Maget, the, the thing that you said? That he said? No. Okay, so Nathan, can you try again? Uh, so you have your module user, right? And user is composed by name and, uh, and age. So, mm -hmm. okay, maybe you find a way that you don't export the type, but you export a, a function that that gets the user, right? But mm -hmm. that dude can still give you a user because he just needs to make an object that has name and age. Because, well, they are just comparing mm -hmm. if the fields are the same, not if the name of the type is the same. Okay. The structural bullshit. So mm -hmm. you cannot make things like abstract types, right? Yeah. And restrain people from creating. But one way I guess you could do it is the function that creates this inside your user module or namespace, it gives you the type and the type has a has a UUID in it, right? So in your functions that gets the user, only gets of that type that has the UUID inside. So no one can can create that shit besides you. Yeah. And you see something fundamental here, Lemos, that only works because you can use values inside types. So, better than Haskell. Oh, yeah, dependent types in this case. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Anyway, uh, for now, we can just leave with the create player function, assuming that we're going to ignore that part of um oh you can just do structural equality and it's gonna be the same and whatever whatever uh let's actually create a weapon here as well weapon entity so how do you create a weapon what do you need for a weapon Magita? what do we need for a weapon right now it has a name and an experience number i Oh, I think that's enough. In the future, with the type of projectile it generates, maybe, but we don't have that now, so that's fine. Okay. So to create one of those, uh, we're going to see them in the name. Uh, what I mean by the type of projectile is like the trajectory, right? Like how they fly, like, see? Like how is their movement, basically? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, so I'm going to create... Uh... Yeah, OO would be really good on this. It would be easy. It would be easy. Yeah, in C Sharp, I would have done this already. Cool. Okay, so you just put in brackets. So in here, WP. Okay. And um, I think we have a player. I think we have a player. There is also this, by the way. So there is a thing that we mentioned before, oh, yeah. which is a combo chain. Yeah, we can ignore that now. What is a combo chain? So we can have an arbitrary number that saves the color of the... It's on the player. Oh. Yeah saves colors of enemies and then depending on the color of the enemy if you keep hitting with the same color repeatedly the experience just doubles you see oh okay it's not just like some points on the screen you the actually experience get of the weapon yeah okay. the experience of the weapon you're using oh that's a good question current weapon oh, oh yeah. wait but how does that work for example i am only hitting uh, actually, like blue no, enemies really. wait 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 that's like there's no concept of current weapon it's like multiple buttons and then you press the button the, of the yeah weapon you use. but we need to yeah. save what what was the last one no no like this applies to any weapon 
Wait, uh, now I... Okay, so you're gonna explain <laughs> the combo chain again for me, Nathan. The combo chain is on the player. So, for example, when you start shooting an enemy, and then, let's say, uh, there's like three yellow enemies. That's one combo, let's say. And then you double. Or not double, double is too much, but you got the point. You double the XP you gain. So the, the XP for what? which weapon? What? For which weapon? Well, okay, I see what do you uh, what do you mean? Like you you want to just level up the weapon? No, uh, not that we want. What happens yeah, in the, the actual it. game? Yeah, what happens? In, which 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 thing gets the experience of the combo? Well, the player doesn't have experience, so it has to be the weapon. Okay. But I think it is. Ju I don't remember if it is all the weapons or just this one. Oh, I, I guess the one that hit the thing, right? And wait, we can know that by can the projectiles a, already. Can you make a combo using different weapons? Oh, you can. Okay, matter. so then I don't know who gets yeah. the experience. Uh, so uh, think about the following, dude. This is a multiplier, I guess. If you hit someone with a weapon, oh, then you level even, up the experience. There is a concept of score in the game as well. Like uh, your experience, oh, I think we're modeling it differently because mm. on the game, like there is both, there's, there is the experience of the weapon and there is the score. The combo goes to the score, but it all, the score influences your experience, I think, man. Okay, so two no, no, different things? I, uh, man, I, I guess they are in parallel in the sense of the combo makes you get the multiplier and that works for the experience and the score. Because the score influence your experience is a bit yeah, because strange, I, I think, guess. I think it doesn't matter because the the combo is, is literally just a multiplier. Yes. Like, so it, as long as you hit like multiple times the enemy, like the the you can map like on the next hit, let's say. Uh, you can map, okay, this hit now gets me this score multiplied by this and the experience multiplied by this. Wait, it you and this, the this that you multiply is the is is the this the same for both the experience of the weapon and the score? Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Uh, Lemus, and the thing is, you don't need anything extra because, well, on the projectile, you will know from which weapon it came from. Yeah, will but I? I'm saying it's... Well, mm -hmm. you can increment information, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it? better than keeping track of like. You know, one weapon because that's impossible. <laughs> yeah, but in your case, we need to know what was the last weapon used, right? But in the way that Lemus was doing regarding annotating their last weapon used or something, that's impossible. Because yeah, you need to not just because it was the first one that you shoot, it doesn't mean it's the first one to hit. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's true. That's true. You have okay. ideas like on the projectile from whom shoot and with what he shoot from, I guess. Oh, that's. Can you repeat that again? Wait. The projectile, projectile has the weapon yes. that it came from and the. Uh, yeah. And okay, so weapon of source or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's Japanese. So does the code Japan and English. Okay, and then uh, the de the destination, right? Um, oh, dude, right. I have a good video to you, my kid. I think that's not the entity destination. That it's like the who dispatched it, right? So who fired? Like owner. Wait, we're gonna we're gonna. Can you remind me again, Anton? Why do we need the this the from which weapon and the other thing? Because you can't know who, well, you can't know that if the last weapon you used is the actual weapon that hit the enemy. Well, not the last, but kind of the first, right? Oh, Wait, enemy, what? I think. What I mean is, just because I shoot one bullet first, it doesn't mean that you hit before I the second one that I shot, right? For example, I shoot with weapon A, and then I switch to weapon B, and then the projectile of A hits the enemy. It should be yeah. weapon A that gets the the bonus. Yeah, but the... it doesn't mean that A will like. Hit yeah, but first, do you agree right? that the weapon A uh, was the one that needs the bonus because 
we know that it hit the enemy? That's why I wanted with the destination. No, no, no. We don't know by just annotating something. That's why we need the ID on the projectile. Magita, I sent you something on private, dude. <laughs> you will love this. Okay, can you can somebody repeat to me? I understood the, the need of the weapon source. Because that's the weapon that we're gonna bonify later. Cool. What else that's do we everything. need? That's <laughs> everything. The... If it was like the user or some enemy. If it was the user of some or some enemy. Yeah, and, and so we can have what's playing in the future. Instead of a bullying, <laughs> you can put some ID, right? <laughs> so we know which we, which user. Okay, so ID. That's what you're proposing. Yep. Ooh, I have a very cursed question now. I have a very... of a race or are we I have a cursed question. Thank so you, this video is awesome. <laughs> That's speak English. <laughs> uh, create projectile. So my cursed question is the following, right? Can I have a global value in within a namespace that is static? A global That's value a nice that question. is within a namespace that is static. Yeah, so if for you... instance, in C I would do something like static counter zero. Oh, I see. Oh, wait, what do you mean by static in that sense? Like, for example, if you recurse the variable static, yes. it doesn't change, right? Yes. Wait, wait, doesn't that count for inside a function? Like for different function calls, do you preserve the static value? What that doesn't want. apply for a namespace. That's my question. Yes. Well, I think you don't have for both, and I don't think it makes sense in the terms of namespaces. No, I want to have a counter that only the projectile have access to, right? In a module, I okay, think... Okay, what you want, I guess, is just a mutable variable there inside the namespace. That's it. But inside the namespace, does it work? I, I wouldn't understand inside a module. But a namespace? Well, I right. don't know, but let's try. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna export this. So this is gonna be projectile uh, projectile mm. counter. Cool. Well, you should do oh, okay. that, right? Or yeah. And why do you do this uppercase? That's not a constant in any way. Uh, yeah, that's true. So let's put projectile counter like that. And then I mean, here... you can use functions, right, Magetta? And functions are supposed to be just values. If you can't do a value like this, that will be... Oh, but wait, you're already doing that with the constants down there. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. this works, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> so, can, yeah, it should just can work. Export, yeah. But okay, if you so... can alter and the state, the stat is preserved, like after you call the function, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what I want to test. We can... Ooh, good question. How are we going to test you this? You can do function inside function if that doesn't work for some reason. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Wait, yeah, where like did I store this? Right? Something like this? Like a closure, right? You have a function mm -hmm. that inside has a counter and returns another function. Mm -hmm. The only bad thing is because you have to like initialize first, right? Why did you send me a blog talking about installing Eclipse, Nata? No, no. Look at the whole page. Like, especially yeah, the right part. Yeah, skip the Java part, dude. Mobile Android programming. You have some interesting things. To start, you have, like, some data representation Do shit. I have this? I suppose so. Okay. Uh, green programming. Then you have like web protocols, 3D, uh, 3D graphics and OpenGL, oh, C and C++ programming. programming. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, dude, there's a lot here. PHP, oh man. I remember you have like everything. The, I remember when the famous tech was PHP, MySQL, and uh, I don't know. What is the what name, is LAMP? It's XAMPP and LAMP, like there are two servers. I think one is for Windows, for instance. Uh, 
Oh, isn't one of those like champ? Yeah, champ is for Windows, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Lamp is the is the other one. Lamp stack. Okay, now we do Good the time, following. <laughs> we do now I'm, now I'm literally doing event first in, in F sharp. No, no. Now look at the chat. Create projectile. Oh, dude! Yes, man. Like this was perfect, and the, look at what they did. They <laughs> you also have something else. You have jam. The jam stack. The gym, JavaScript yep. APIs markup. Here I have a bar example. Per high security, performance, scalability. Yeah, the that's a that's a bad image, but the last one is better. Let's see. Figma sketch storybook. Man, why does it look like childish? <laughs> <laughs> it does, right? Uh, build, Gatsby, Google. Ooh, I have Sanity another video. cursed question. But that's very good, right? You only need some very like uh, that tools you almost doesn't doesn't need to program. What is yeah. the question? Lens? Okay, so I'm hitting a problem in which I need what C and Python call this. <laughs> that sounds like a problem indeed. Oh, no no yeah, but that is a huge problem. You are saying you need objects? So I don't know what you mean. You mean like a method and then yes, the method yes, system? because otherwise no, it's gonna can... look very stupid. Can you show us the problem? Yeah, yes. what is the problem? Okay, so uh, it is. Uh, I'm gonna go to the fire first. Okay, here. So as you can see, it, when I am doing an action with the player and it presses Z, I'm actually asking for the first weapon of the player S to do fire. And then I pass the current coordinates of the player because those are be will be used to 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 create the projectile that the weapon will fire. The problem is that the the projectile now needs to know where it came from, which means that we need to pass a weapon to the create projectile thing. But I don't have that weapon. I can I can have the weapon if I do something stupid like this. No, no, I think you are having some confusion here. Yeah. Uh, so you have the function fire on the namespace of a player, no. you see? But Wait, how, is, how that is, that? Should, is that where... Uh, okay, go, go on. Let's suppose no, that that's the case. Okay, you have fire in some namespace. I don't care if it's the player or the weapon, but you have somewhere in some namespace, right? Yeah. And then you pass the data to it. Right, the function is not inside the data as you are doing. Oh, so it's not inside the state. I need this to be here, and then I need the fire to be only a weapon, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Okay, now it works. Thank you for uh, helping with my confusion. Um, oh, we can go back to OP if you really want. No, I'm fine. Entity. And I think I need to pass the entity and the coordinates. By the coordinates. way, we can try to do something with with the Sega Saturn later, by the way. Uh, another time, not now, of course. Not soon. No, no. I went to a C learning journey, so... Yeah, but dude, that's like, a bit better now. I, I, was I was giving it a shot with C, and it, is, it just works. Like, it is perfect. <laughs> what do you mean by just not? works? Did you bootload your Sega Saturn? I downloaded an emulator. I downloaded the, the engine of, that a French dude made and then I just compiled I literally I you just need to have like a GCC or whatever I think they even ship with GCC inside like the binaries but if you want Holy. you can install your own and then you just literally run a PowerShell command or a Linux like a, an SH and then it just works. It builds an image. You load it automatically loads on your emulator installed, and then that's it. Just boots is the game. The and you can for test making it. games any good? Sorry, e? is the API for making games any good? Is it for making games any good? No, is the API for making oh, yeah, games yes. any good? Yes, it is. It is pretty good, man. You can. Huh. I mean, it's C. So it's not amazing. No, it's not assembly. <laughs> yeah, but you can do with C++ as well. But you're going to lose some performance, obviously, on the game. I don't know about, obviously. 
Don't they have something regarding, oh, if you are not using the abstractions, you will not pay for them? Uh, good question. I don't know how they... Because it's just a library, right? If you are not using like classes in C++, I don't think they should matter, right? We are almost ready to test this thing. Init game. Do you think that's going to work, like, on the first try? I would bet very heavily on the no this this time. <laughs> I hope it does, though. <laughs> Let's be... Uh, do, can we, do we have a function to create a player? I think I made one. C, P, G, E. Man, what the fuck? My... <laughs> create Come on, player. Dude. What is the what do I need to pass to that thing in order to that to work? Nothing. Awesome. Okay, so I, we uh, need a player to play the game. That's cool. We need enemies to play the game, at least for now. So enemies. Here, you can look not there. Wait a second. Why do you have this create player shit, dude? Because Don't you have a default state and that's it? I'm creating the default state of of the game. Oh. Okay. Ah, uh, Joe. Wait, by why homebrew? Uh, what do you mean? He's saying Sega Saturn has the key for homebrews. Oh, okay, in that sense, not in the Mac package manager sense, right? Yeah. Okay, I see. The game, the lighthouse of São Bento do Oeste. Mm. Oh, dude! Look at the look at the gallery and go to the quick like demo. What the fuck? They have a map editor? Okay, it, that's. There, I will show you after we finish, but it has that's everything. Nice. It is really cool. Oh, that's the K, right? Indeed. Yeah, but they they have a shit ton of examples, man. Like that you can just like learn with them. Like how to. Oh, do they even talk about your favorite game, dude. Things are Dragoon. Oh really? Where? Yeah, on the last lines. Oh, on the home. I guess. About me. About me. On the home page. About me. Oh, okay. Johannes Fats, I live in France. And I work in Eureka Technology. And also a teacher in Etna, C language, Windows, Unix, Mac OS. Hello. Sega Saturn is above all. Okay, so what else do we need to make a game? We need a name oh, to list. Man, Panzer Dragon Saga is amazing. Like, that game is really good. And we need the score. And that's it. So now, I'm gonna grab this. And instead of saying that, I'm gonna just say this. Player, enemies, and now we're also going to have a score. And by the way, I know the community, Nata. There's like a lot of people who do this kind of stuff, so we could even ask for help. That's nice. That's pretty cool. Okay. Okay, now I think it's time. I think it's time. Let's see if we fail. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Do, do you guys want to review? The... Uh, do, you, do you guys want to review no. first or just screw no, it? No, just compile and the, the, the compiler <laughs> review first. Okay. Uh, I need this. Yeah, we need to input. Wait. It's the opposite, right? What do you mean? You need to import the movement on the index. No, I will do that. Yeah, but why do you paste in there? I pasted F. Oh, that P. Okay, never mind. So how does that work? I just put movement. <laughs> yeah. Now dot slash. Oh. MV, dude. Moment. What happened to you, like? <laughs> I feel like I'm coding in uh, in very old it CDs. It didn't even work, by the way. You didn't even what? It doesn't even work like this. Okay, so how do I what import do all the namespaces? 
Uh, star. 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 Here, F. No. Blah, blah, blah. No, no. No, no. Just star. Yes. If you want to give an alias, you do S. No, I don't, blah, 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 blah. I don't want the alias. I but the thing that you are doing works. If you choose <laughs> the name correctly. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so what is the first thing that we need to do when you create a game? You need the game. Uh, so in here we need state game. State init uh, game. Why yeah. is that a function? This? If it doesn't take anything. Uh, well, it could take the number of players or something like that in the future, but... Yeah, I don't now. know why I made a function, to be honest. Um, they, uh, they're crazy about them. Uh, you just love function, right? Okay, Is then. The only functions? Wait, I need we need FP, and I removed it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, dude. Okay, then we create the 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 event listener for those. Okay. Uh, but we need to change this thing. Because we don't have this anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this, I think it was the player. Yes, it was the player. So now we need to do what? Game state. And I need to acquire the player. So is this this notation? Well, I hope. Is this the notation? No, it is state. It is... Wait, there is something funny there, dude. Because we we are supposed to have a draw function. We should just call it. What do you mean Why by a draw we... function? Well, a draw function, it gets the states and draw, right? Uh, but we are doing stuff, quote-unquote, by hand there. We are. We are doing stuff, quote-unquote, by hand. Let's do what you said. I like oh. that idea. Wait, don't wait, but don't we have that already? Some draw function? No, we don't. This is the draw function, draw image. No, but <laughs> what just it? For example, oh, you see there on set interval, there you have what is supposed to be our draw function. It's just not abstracted away. Okay, so let's actually make. Uh, I don't want to have to be using these numbers all the time. I want to use the constants that I made. So let's actually call. Uh... Oh shit! Now I see the fucking problem, dude. Uh, remember the thing that I said regarding function to uh how can i say to get the next state and then you draw that shit we are doing intercalated that's that's terrible dude that's, <laughs> that's very bad oh no no we're not doing intercalated actually we do this only for the first time and then after no no, no. do this no take a look dude <laughs> you draw something then you do enemy movement then you draw again that's what i mean no it is okay, intercalated on Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, but this should live in on the game state, right? This function. Okay. No idea. <laughs> you know, I have no idea. Okay, let's put it in here for now. Draw. Uh, I need to do actually nothing. You don't need that. <laughs> so what do we want to draw actually? Wait, you don't have unit lemus. Isn't just nothing? This? Yes. Okay. Um, so what do we want to draw? Everything. Yeah, no, you I get know. The state? Yeah, yeah, but the order matters in this case. I want to. I want to. Mm. No, no, the orders. Wait, wait, matters in regarding what? Other drawings or other stuff? Other, other stuff. No, no, they don't. They don't. Okay, so let's do what you said. So let's pick all the drawings and combine them in a single place. Uh, oops. Let's pick all of those and put them with those guys. And then update presence. I don't know if update presence is actually drawing anything. Presence. Yeah, there. Yeah, are you drawing, my friend? No. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna pick all of these drawings here and we're gonna dump all of them. Uh, oops. I'm gonna grab those, grab those, put in a draw function, which is this. 
Uh, oh, we need to pass the context, I guess. We need the context. Oh, yeah. So, what is the type of this? This is the only time where I need LSP until now. Oh, boy. Wait a second. Oh, okay, because you are not defining the functions there, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a I... bit tragic, but okay. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to surrender now. So... Uh, what is your type, my friend? Canvas rendering context 2D. Okay. Canvas context. Canvas what? Canvas rendering context 2D. Yeah, the only thing that will have to change if you want to do different kinds of like rendering. And we need the game as well. Is. Well, actually, it's not that bad. Okay. And oh, we need oh, we need all this stuff, dude. We need the images of the stuff. I think we need to a namespace for for surroundings of the game, like assets and context and canvas and stuff like that. That I should just pass it in here and accident access all the things that I need within the function. Does that make sense? Wow, one solution is for it to define draw there. What do you mean? To define the things in here? Defining draw there, where you have all of this in namespace. I am very confused on what you mean. Uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah. So, okay, you have the function draw, right? Yeah. So you could define there on main where you have those things. Or... Or... What you could do is, or <laughs> I guess you prefer this one. <laughs> Just saying, uh, you create, you have some namespace. I don't know which one, and there you have all the initialization and stuff, including the draw defined there, where you have everything in namespace. Okay, what about configuration? Ah. Uh... Kind I, I guess it I guess it's good enough but just so uh, not necessarily for us to do not even the, the future maybe but just for uh, we can pay attention on that is suppose you want to render your game with different renderers right yes, yes, yes different what you mean, what you mean. so one way you could do is define draw there, but we don't want that, right? Yep. Uh, because that's weird, that's main. But some other way that you could do is define the engine or configuration, as you are calling. And there you do the specific initialization of resources, like canvas and blah, blah, blah. Yep. And you have a draw there that uses those things, right? So. Yep. Then we can just do something like configuration.init and configuration.draw, right? If you yes. want a different yes. renderer, yes, we yes. just write to a different one of those. Yep. That is a good future plan. And this time we're going to do that, okay? No more <laughs> postponing. Forever. I don't know about that, but that's a good start. Yeah, that's nice. You can even pass the parameters on in it, man. Yeah, that's great. Uh, okay, so in here, that, then the game state dot player. This is exactly the same. Well, not exactly, exactly, because we need to do player dot player dot. If this works first try, we're going to see a miracle in front of our eyes, dudes. I, it will not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it will, but I don't think it will. Uh, I need to remove this extra naming that I did for no reason. Uh, like this. There's no reason to do that. Because you already are within the namespace.
what else? Oh, okay. Mm, by the way, did you guys ever use it something good to build C stuff? Usually so no make like, and what shit. Do mean, what do you mean something good? <laughs> Better than make. Um, makes. Good luck. Huh? Do you? <laughs> I do, I'm I... asking if you did, not if you. We did. Know it's no, no, okay. no. We did. Yes, we did. We did. Really? <laughs> yeah. NWM just works because of Nix, man. Yeah, yeah, but Lemus doesn't sound very, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, very I... happy with the process. Do you want a template? I have one here. I was doing for did, my database. Did this my Lemus reaction? I'm probably better with Make, dude. No, what dude. happened? You Not are better today. with Make, yeah. <laughs> did you see? <laughs> if you have to install dependency, you were cursed. No, yeah, no, no, okay. That, that's part of the problem. Dependency, okay, but I mean, build system-wise. I'll just... Yeah, then it's just a make like it's just a series of instructions but if you have to link shit yeah. then yeah oh okay so yeah you're talking just for the dependency part right yeah. okay uh... makes sense yeah i would prefer nix also but draw where is the code man i think i was building it, was uh, it i was using the just file things lamps it is quite good but not to use as a build system so not use instead of make to do a C project, for example. It's good just for, okay, let's run some commands, right? Just a command runner. So, uh, yeah. with action. I see. Uh, you cannot like depend on files. With... It depends on the key and the state. The key is the input. So you're gonna be like that. This. Okay, then we do the update projectiles, which I already for I don't know uh, projectiles. We don't need only need the game. Awesome, game stay. Yeah, I don't have it here. Not I need to go through Linux to get it. Oh, yeah, Lemus. I was using this for LLVM and it was working fine with the LSP and everything. Oh, that that's impressive, but. It, it took some time, right, to do those things? A bit, yes, but it just works now. Uh, Lemus, you have to draw after, I guess. Oh, after you set stuff. This and is drawing. They're on the load. Now you can call just draw there. Oh, this actually needs to return a thing, yes. What? Because this no, is not it doesn't. Open. It does you, because you have no state transition. Oh there. no 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 no! You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, but the enemy movement does. Okay, that's a problem. Dude, you should not call enemy movement there. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, this is doing two, the, this function. You're right. This is only doing the logic. So this should we should keep this in here. Yeah. Update presence. Um, I think this is just gonna be enemy. Why sub date presence? Uh, it's it's for the projectiles this one. Uh, and I forgot where. Oh, enemy. Move. Yeah, that's the thing to consider regarding the logic on getting next state. In which order should you should we run those things, right? That's something to decide. Oh yeah. So the movement one only updates the entity. Only updates the entity. Hmm. Oh, this is the broken line before. Oh, I see. Okay, we need to fix that. <laughs> uh, uh, state. Is update presence from the state or from the projectiles? Oh, by the way, I'm not sure if you if you guys saw, but I sent something about uh, CX. Wait a second. Project update. Project yeah, project something updates. about uh, CX thing? extensions oh. on GCC, dude. They have some crazy stuff like it, like nested functions. Have, dude. They even have stuff that goes like against the C standard. <laughs> one of them. No, no, but that's the thing. If it is called extension, it is already breaking the the, the standard, dude. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, okay, okay. So. Exactly that. And it goes as simple as you have a function called get line that is very handy. And then you have crazy stuff like nested functions, man. Like, yeah, that's nested fucking crazy. Is something very weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm, I changed my mind. Let's do the way that Nathan said before. What was the way? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you said to do... No, no, what was the way? I'm not saying I don't remember. I just want for you to repeat. You said to, instead of doing... Uh, you, is that if you have a function that is for the player, but it actually requires the game, that's not a problem. You just put the function inside the name space of the entity, and you pass the name, the game space, the game state as a, as a parameter. And I changed the function to not do that anymore, and I regret it very heavily. Uh, so it's gonna be this, and then we can loop this. Uh, yes, what? which means that now this... Are you sure you did? This is still on the namespace? Is it still getting the game state? Yep. What changed? I just copy the, the version... Look at movement true. Do you see that the difference? Ah... Uh, entity? Oh, no, no. But that's not the difference that I was talking about, especially today. I think and, you, and that's, uh... it was exactly this case with the player, but it was not this function. No, but... But yeah, if you have the game, it is better for you to use in that way, in the high level, right? But if you are using inside other stuff, then it's okay for you to not use the whole game, right? Mm -hmm. It can make clear what you need and shit. Update, projectiles presence, then we update the time, then we draw. Oh no, this is only draw. Where do we use the time on uh, the logic yeah. update stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oops. The only drawing thing that we shouldn't be doing that we are still are doing is this one. Yeah, this is just state.draw. But we don't want to draw everything. We only want to draw the player. No, we want to draw everything. everything. Okay. Uh, like, that's the whole well. scene. And before that, we need some kind of state.init, right? To do the things we were doing on main before. Like this? Yeah, exactly. So it's there, right? Okay, mm -hmm. nice. I think it's time. Why is it breaking on the states? Because oh, LSP is stupid. That's why. Are you sure? Oh, no. Wait a second, dude. We were using load because the image had to load first, right? Yeah. That's what the init is doing. Uh, no, no, but then you are doing before the load, that's a problem. But then the, you're doing before the load. I'm confused. Yeah, okay. So, in init, you are doing some stuff like getting the image, right? Uh, I'm doing precisely this. Uh, draw. Oh no, okay, yeah, I guess it's fine. Uh, no, no, so no, no, wait, get... wait, 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 I said BS, I said BS, I'm not doing that. I'm doing that here. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. but I saw the, the drawing and that uh, helped me understand the thing. So, it doesn't matter if you use init before and that is getting images and stuff, it doesn't matter. Because when you draw, it's... Okay, you should only draw when the thing actually loaded, right? And that's what we are already doing. So, yeah, I guess we will be fine. Let's let's go with Magetta's concern. So, Magetta, you think it's not because of LSP breaking? Oh, I don't see a reason why would the LSP break in this case. Okay, so let's see all of it just to see what's going to happen. I think you forgot to do add an export. Mmm, it's possible. Okay, so the configuration. Do we need these outside of this? If we sharp LSP, I would, I would agree. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are exporting the namespace. Are you exporting the state inside of it? Uh, we, don't, we are not using this right now. I actually can even comment oh, sorry, this out. State.what that you're using there? We are, we are using state.everything. So state.draw, 
is they dot projectile presence, update projectile presence, update projectiles. Yeah, that's weird. So just try. Let's see. Are you using this? I'm not sure, but okay. Yeah, try Oops. something. Bad object. Uh, oh. Uh, what? This module source could not be parsed. Expected as got from. What? You cannot do that in. What is the <laughs> name of that thing that we are using? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I forgot what is the name of that is. Oh, Dino, right? Yeah. Oh, by the way, my get up. I, I just can't get uh, last GCC in the last version, dude, using stuff that I have regarding package manager. Like, APT doesn't have, uh, Nix doesn't have, I use some a, other that I use doesn't have. Is Nix, Nix package is unstable? No, no, I, I saw, even on stable, I don't have the last version of GCC there. It's 13, I guess. Doesn't mm -hmm. have that. That's so strange. Like, on Nix package is on unstable, it, it should have. Let me take a look again. Okay, uh, but we need to discover yeah. how to do the import with Dino. Yeah, I know, I know, but they will suck. Go up there. Oops. And add S. Uh, put a label, I don't know. Oh, uh, no. Like, or... More? Yeah, okay, I wouldn't call this file like this, it doesn't really make sense. We're gonna to change the name uh, of the file in a few moments. Yeah, okay. And then, what is breaking out on this instead? Can you add uh, some... Yeah, do the following, go to the beginning. Go to the beginning, I am in the beginning. No, beginning of the sentence. Enter, 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 add like 10 enters. Okay, now check their message. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <is that> <laughs> Next Not level ID, dude. Okay, remove the TS. Remove the TS. TS. There you go. That's it. Can we and try to now do that? that? No. No, no, no. No, you still need that. And the, and the depth from TS. Here's what you do to fix this. Uh, remove the depths.ts as well. No, we need we need this. No, no. The TS, I mean. No, but we are doing dot .ts, dude. I know, but it's complaining now. But it's complaining, but it was working. Why? Yeah, whatever, just remove it. Okay, so uh, open the brackets on the instead of the star as blah blah blah. Remove this garbage. Yeah, remove this garbage, like like s. No, 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 dude, just the s. Yes, remove this and just import what you need, like oh, okay. State. I think I only need state. Okay, so just open state. Uh, yeah, I just checked my get. Uh, they don't on unstable. But also, it was from like last month. Wait, wait a second. Oh, okay. So update with action. Now only these two are breaking. And actually, this is enemy. So I actually need enemy. I lied. What the? What well, the? I'm not oh, sure okay. about the release date, but yeah, it doesn't have. It is, it is not there. Update with action. Where does this live? This lives inside a, a player. Cool. Oh, okay. Now I see. And I need to import. Yeah, the release is just a few. Like, uh, it has been just a few days from the release. Oh, That's okay. why. Yeah. Although like on Nix because they should be bots that could do not the, module yeah. not found. Uh file blah 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 at file huh? then a bundle is the uh, whatever. Um uh, module not found movement. Huh? Try again to do with the extension. That's dumb. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> okay. Ah, I think I know. Okay, it... what? Okay, just add .ts and try to compile them. Uh, okay, now it's a problem in this file. Oh. Okay. Depths. Oh, ts. Yeah, but... Get reckless. <laughs> okay, now we have typing problems. Cool. Uh, ooh, this is quite a few. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's why. What the fuck? That's not all waivers, right? Uh, yeah, it's all waivers. Um, okay, so we need uh, line 49. Okay. Cannot find the issue. This oh, guy. Wait. You cannot export constants. Oh, really? Wait, so the order matters, actually. No, no, no. Yeah. No, I mean, you need to annotate everything, right? If you're using and the constants are not there. So it makes sense. Okay, so init, init, player, player, fix those. Uh, do you mean... Can't you, can't you do some kind of open? <laughs> well, that would be very bad, but can you? Oops. Like, open a namespace? Oops. Right, it's this. Uh, I don't know, man. Let I me take a look. Well. Used to be there. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Then we have property weapon does not exist on a type entity. Do you mean weapons? Yes, I do mean weapons. Uh, uh, then we have new projectile. Oh, but this was failed because uh, failing because I didn't have the constant here. That makes sense. Okay, now line 97. Oh, we don't have those anymore. Yep. Good, good, good. Cannot find game. Line 101. Oh, that makes also sense because I need to do state dot. Next. Cannot use namespace projectile. Cannot use the namespace projectile. Use the projectile. Oh, uh, entity. And I also don't need those. Cool, cool, cool. Next. Uh, uh, what is the problem? Argument of type coordinate is not assignment to parameter of type entity. Oh, I know. Because for some random reason I reversed the order. Forty-six. Uh, this actually turns a projectile entity. Forty-seven. Uh, Next. Next. There's no exported member entity. What do you mean? Oh, that's true. PS. Yeah. Do I need to type this? Uh, okay, in this case, I'm actually gonna do the all the way. Okay, now we are here. Property context does not exist on type type of configuration. Well, of course it does. <laughs> Can I do this or I need to do use let's all over the place? Wait, what are they saying? Oh, I need to export these. Oh. Oops. Uh, canvas, blah, blah, all of these I am exporting now. Export, yes, this. Enemy has no exported entity, I already fixed that. Okay, go. Um, B. 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 Man, I hate that. Is <laughs> That's a bad deal. Properties from type entity ID. Oh, ID weapon source. I forgot about those. That's true. Okay. So in order to do a a projectile, oh, in order to do a projectile, I need the the other information. Ooh, that's a problem. Mm. That's a big big problem because to make a projectile now, I need an ID, and I don't have. Well, we can. It's kind of cursed, but we can theoretically speaking do this. 
projectile dot projectile counter. Uh, although that that is a global variable no, 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 that should no. be only within here. Yeah, that's that's not quite what you want. Can you show me the part where you generate the projectile? Yeah, here. Uh, create projectile. A weapon, cornet. Wait, but you don't have a user there. Oh no, dude, this is wrong. This is this. Done. Wait a second, dude. Do you have something really. <laughs> oh, fire is just creating a projectile. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, there is something wrong. Somewhere there, you need to know from which uh, player it came from. Uh, because then you can hit which yourself. Player. Wait. Whoo! Okay, uh, repeat that, Nathan, please. Uh, so, um, Lemos, if you don't know from which, from whom is the bullet, you can hit yourself. So, when you are creating a projectile, you need to have some information about the user somewhere. Oh, that's what I'm get it's called ownership. Yeah. Ah. Uh... Okay, yeah, that's the idea, dude. Yeah, that's the ID. Oh, but that means that every single... Wait, what? Well, is the ID related then you to know the owner? Shot. Yes. Ooh, that's a problem then. How so? Because we don't have that notion that every single entity has an ID. Well, I, I don't know about the the enemy. Like, I don't know if no, that should no, be a... That needs to be fair. If, the, if I can shoot myself, the enemy no, should be yeah, able to shoot but, himself. But that needs... Himself. Yeah, but what I mean is uh, that that is silly if you not use anything to how can I say? Uh... Why do you think about it? I'm gonna reload the game and see. Yeah, let's see think a bit. Dude, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the error is the same. Yes, now we can fix it. And it is 100% better. Awesome. Awesome. 100%. Now. <laughs> yes, I'm not sure about 100. No, there is no <laughs> way you guys th think this is not uh, double double the quality. Uh, of the it is working just the same, right? I only care about the client. Ah, okay. So now you're pragmatic. <laughs> you're using the pragmatic <laughs> path. Okay, I see. <laughs> okay, now we can do what um, um, Magetta said. We already have all the namespaces in one file. Now we need to divide the files, right? You fix the thing first, man. Let's fix the thing then. So the, the problem is now very clear. It is literally this line here. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, I, I, yeah, I'm thinking here, Lemus. Maybe the bullets from the enemy should be like their own thing. Because unless we want to give some, like, specific stuff for for the enemies, like different weapons, and if they could level up or they have some internal state also, you see? Because for, like, eliminating them from the screen, we don't need an ID as far as I know. Maybe it makes the code a little better, but it would only be a thing if we actually, like, need more stuff about, oh, let's update the experience of that uh of that enemy or something like that right and also you shoot a projectile and then you have to pass a weapon okay what is the weapon of the enemy you see like it's a bit silly right yeah i think we that's a good unless point. they have different weapons and shit yeah but they do so they do yeah okay <laughs> that's an argument for keeping the weapon as a parameter now, yeah, but, about the but ID. I, before we continue that discussion, I had an idea on how to solve this uh, move of this problem that we're having right now. So I think that the best solution is to instead of con controlling the enemy movements using uh, like what we are doing right now, which is basically just like there's an inside the enemy namespace there's a function called movement. The enemy itself should contain its own movement uh, movement function. So what do you mean is OP, right? I mean, I don't know what you <laughs> mean. I could, do, I could do the same with type classes, but anyway. Well, so you this... have type classes could do the same. 
So this is what uh this is what I already commented here, and I remember why. Wait a second. Can can you uh, explain again your solution? Yes. So my idea is instead of having a function externally being called like in here and then we just you pass the 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 the, the thing to do the math and uh, the game state and by then... the way that's to update all enemies position yes right? yes yes that okay. we're going to replace this with a function that updates all the enemies positions but okay. if the enemies are dead they will go away with their movement so they don't need to care anymore do you agree yeah, that doesn't make sense because we have an array of enemies. So only the like live ones that are there will like move, right? Exactly. And even regarding different So yeah, you don't need to change anything. I don't know what you mean. So inside of game state you have all the enemies, right? Uh yes. Only the live ones are there on the state? Uh, yes. The dads are just out of the array. So yes, yes. you have your answer. No, I don't. It already solves it. No, I don't. Because oh, the enemy does... one. Because the because the enemy doesn't know how to move. Look at implementation of movement. Movement one. one. That's the function, right? So the thing you do is you go to the array of all the enemy, all the enemies, and you update their position. Like, what is the secret? No, 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 I'm not saying that that's not the solution, I'm saying that's not what we are doing. Oh, sure, but yeah, you do that instead of using some, like, OOP, right? I have and no idea what you mean. I have absolutely no idea what you mean. Okay, so, okay. That's a function, movement one, that is supposed to move all the enemies. So what you do is, you map the array of enemies, moving their position, by this formula. Oh, so you're asking to... Oh, okay, I, see, I think I see what you mean. But then how are you going to diversify the movements of the enemies? Type. They have a type tag. If type tag equals blah, 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 then you move this way. Otherwise, you use this other formula. Which uh, approach do you prefer, Magita? One mm. is OOP. Yeah, one the is other OOP, is pattern matching. And the other one is pattern matching using a tag to dif differentiate the movement. I think the OOP is easier to spot. I agree. Oh, and... That is also a different thing. Uh, that only works for the case in which uh, the same type of enemy has the same movement, right? Which, it, yeah, uh, that, that's a, a apart, problem. Apart, no, no, it is not. Apart from, okay, in which position he is right now, because that will be different regarding all of them. But we could also change that by inside of the enemy, it can carry a function, right? And what I mean is the formula will be different, not only the inputs, because the inputs are already different. Yeah, right? that's they are exactly. All that, that's why. That's exactly why I made the movement shoe, Nathan, because I wanted to be able to have multiple functions of movements, and then just assign them to the enemies within the the enemy. But this is OOP, so, like you said. No, no, that's not necessarily implemented in OOP. So see the example. Uh, I create an enemy. Depending on something that I don't know, it could be random. They receive a different uh, movement function to be inside their their object, right? And I mean object just in the sense of struct. You see? Yeah. They then what I do in movement these, is right? for every uh, enemy, I get its function inside the struct, and I use to update its position. Like it's not OOP, and they are inside the. I don't you know see? what you're calling OOP then. Why? How OOP would be the... is okay, go. you implement the method that manipulates your private state. Yeah. You manu you create the method that manipulates your private state. So that's mutation, right? Yeah, that's not. I don't think that's what I what I envision. I envision what you said. The movement function is within the struct, and when we call the function movement, all the enemies move. No, no. Actually, I, I'm saying bullshit. That's that. That's not OOP. Like it could be OOP without having mutation, right? Yeah, yeah. it could be. But... Yeah, I, I'm fucking bullshit. I think but, that yeah, they... you could do that way. Okay, so I want to experiment doing because I don't know how to do that in TypeScript. How do I say that I have a function in here? Is this the way? Uh, yeah, but the first question is the yeah. following. Yeah, you don't need that that parenthesis. Uh, but my question is the following, Lemus. Uh, supposing they have some the same kind of type, 
you know uh how will their movements vary with it uh, within the same type like both are enemies type a how do they have different movements in which sense i was thinking uh, some randomized yeah, but Stuff. I don't think that's very fair to the game. Wait, repeat again, please. Yes, he's yeah. asking if we're gonna have different movements, the, if the enemy type is the same. Yeah, well, he actually asked how, but I actually want to know if that's the case. If you have different movements depending on the type of enemy. No, no, no. If you have different movements within the same type of enemy. Yes, that's it. What do you if mean you by have... different movements? Uh, so like this your, cosine here. Your formula oh, for like movement your... is different. Yeah, this um, yeah. this thing. I don't see why it would have the same. That's my question. You see, if no, they because, have no, but because if they don't, then you don't need all of this. Yeah, I you think, can just I think have it, a type tag. It makes a lot of sense to be the same, I get it, because for instance, when you have in the game, I, this I already saw in the videos, the gameplays that we they watched. The enemies that are the same type, usually they are exactly the same movement, but with a, a delta of being a little bit to the left or a no, little bit there, to the right. No, 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 wait. There is a thing of multiple enemies doing a trajectory, but the same enemy can be reused multiple times and they do different trajectories to other places. Oh, yeah, that's true, right? And also that goes with the idea of uh, a play, right? In the sense of Open theater. Open video again. We always end up the stream of the video. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, to be flexible, uh, Lemus, you could do the carrier function indeed. And then when creating, you could do the simple oh, thing yeah. of matching like the type that you want to create, right? And giving a specific function or giving a known a like generic function. Okay, can, can I skip this? Yes, or is it just bosses? Because you clicked in a video last time that it was just the bosses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you see the chain there? Yeah. Look at the... Yeah, that, that is the... Chain status. Status. Why did his chain change? Like, it was with three... Did you notice? Like it was with two blues, and then it went to zero. I think that maybe if you change, maybe changing the weapons, uh, you remove the chain, the combo chain, the chain status, or something. Oh, oh that's man. interesting. I didn't notice this before. Because it it would be very unfair if you can continue the combo using different weapons. I don't see why. Not though. really, because you have a whole point of no, in which situation you want, if you to want, use which weapon. If you want to be able to have a high chain status. This, the trade-off is that you need to only use one weapon. That's, that sounds very fair to me. Well, you already have to think about only shooting the same kind of enemy, dude. Yes, dude. I... Well, you can do that indeed to make harder, but you already have a trade-off. Yeah, that's not a good example because the enemies yeah, are just... No, 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 but this, you see? They are yeah, doing they... exactly the same with uh, like a, a delay no, yeah, from each one. That's each the other. They are, but at the same time, they are just doing that because, well, it's it's a path. Pretty speed. Yeah, pretty that's speed. not a good like, example. If they, if you go like, if you see the same enemies in some other area, that doesn't mean they do the same thing. Like you see, the point like they don't oh, have the same. Oh, the enemies they they are they have the same quote unquote skin, but they behave differently. Yeah, exactly. the same uh, what skin skin. Like the same, they're of the same, oh. but they move differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, okay, so let's do what Yeah, Nathan so said. let's do the function, right? Like, what is what is your, like, enemy type? Oh, that's it, right? Man, this game would be really cool with, like, WebGL and, like, a 3D background. Well, yeah, but that's too much work, my guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, but maybe this is already in the browser. Maybe it yeah, wasn't enough. Make the spaceship 3D. Uh, my guess, uh, but, but that's the thing. Dude, if you are doing in the certain way that I was talking about, then we can just change how we render the thing. So we could do that later, dude. Right now, it would be too no, much I to worry about yeah. rendering that. I have no idea if this is going to work. Is this how, how it works? What? What, what works? What? One, 
Yeah, so I made, uh, just for now, the type signature being oh, okay. you receive two things mm -hmm. and return another. And I'm yeah. when creating an, uh, an enemy, I just saying that the movement for all the guys for now will be this, this function. Yeah. I'm hoping that works. Ah, uh, wait, you, you, ha you have some yeah, problem. You want to pass that, right, when you create it. No, you he's creating there, but he needs a, another yeah. function. The function to move all of them. A function to move them all. <laughs> no, 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 but that's I'm going to do it later. But I just noticed a thing. We don't actually want to receive this. We want to receive an enemy. We want to update a single. We like this is a function for the the single elements. The older oh, function indeed. that Nathan is talking about, that one is the one that. Uh, we yes, you're see. right. Okay, so this is gonna be. Entity. And it makes sense in which I said before, right? If the function is going to be used by another one that is on the top level, then it is it is like. It is okay if it is not game state to game state, right? It is still practical. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're, what we're talking about. And then what Nathan was talking about was to make a function called move enemies, uh, which would be an export function move enemies, in which we receive the time. We oh, receive... dude, that's a nice separation. That's for the whole game, right? Yes. So if you have the top level functions for the whole game there, and these calling the specific ones for other namespaces, that's a good separation. Okay, and now we need to do the for each, which I think we already did before. No, I no, that's forget. a map, right? That's a map? That's sure. a map. That's a map. So we're gonna do... I forgot already. Okay, no, it's this. This is how we, we do it. Uh... Okay, so I'm gonna grab the enemies. Enemies. And I'm going to return the same <laughs> thing using uh, enemies, this, that. Uh, uh, oh, enemies, that's... Enemy... No. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I need a lambda, right? Wait a second, dude. I think I need uh... a lambda. Yeah, you need the lambda to call the, the thing. So how does that work? Is it like this? Wait a second, that's... So fucking weird. Yeah, it is like that. So the enemy... We call... Oh, in itself, right? Like passing E to it. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. yeah, I believe that. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> so you can delete the braces. Okay. Yes. Okay, that means that in here, instead of doing whatever I'm doing there, I'm going to do state, uh, move enemies. I'm going to pass the time and the game state. Is, is wow, that that's, that is indeed a lot better. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it crashed. Cool, bruh. <laughs> That's so you awesome. to execute a structured clone. I think I warned you folks about that, right? I don't even know what is that. That is to do that. It is to it... recursively like copy a thing. Oh. Okay, what is where is this happening? Uh... <laughs> oh, on window. On window, yeah. That's indeed not supposed to be called on window. Yeah, that's a strange. But uh Did let me close that. The there? Just like looking the whole project for it yeah so the, that function is being used in here there no no look for a structured clone no uh, structured only two places so game state okay oh shit what do we have inside the game state <laughs> We have everything. Yeah. Take a look mm -hmm. there. Show us the type of game state. Oh, a function. How do you copy a function? <laughs> That's yeah. a very good question. I spy that. <laughs> uh, we have enemies, oh, and now the enemies, yeah. they have that. 
Okay, so we don't have a choice. We need to make that function functional programming now, FP. Yeah, yeah, let's get rid of the structured clone stuff. Yeah, okay. But wait, let's the harder one, man. What is the other one? Isn't the other one easier to do? Yeah, that's a lot easier to do. <laughs> uh, I actually don't recall why I did it in this way, to be honest. Let me <laughs> read this. Match makes me really sad. What, what, Magetta? This match makes me really sad. <laughs> Man, this FP, this FP library is a bad idea. Yes, I don't like, think it adds much, man. Well, we're not using it, it much for now. Shit. No, we are not using it for now. So that it's, you can say we, that for every, everything that you're not using. No, no, we will not, dude. Like, to start the what's the name? The option thing, dude. That's just like new. You see, <laughs> that's just using a union type. So, yeah, it's not adding thing. anything. No, they reduce. Is... Why are we using this reducing instead of the built-in one? Like, what the fuck? It's just like worse to call this. Like, it has a a worse syntax. Where is the reduce? Uh, there. Where? Wait, wait, wait. It's not there, but you are calling somewhere the reduce. <laughs> oh, I the think... fold somewhere else. Yeah, I know where. Yeah. I kind of disagree. I don't. I don't think that because you can use news that justifies using bad stuff. But okay. What? I don't know what you mean. I just want to think nulls here, they make no difference at all. Like, they're the same thing as, like, well, new in JavaScript, in Scheme. I don't know in, in which sense you mean. Like, you're not going to get a memory fault <laughs> error because of a new. Well, you can. The but... language is already new. Like, that's what it's... Okay, the types maybe not, but then they would be forced for you to but, handle with an interrogation mark. Uh, yeah, th that's the thing that I'm saying. If you have the union type, string or new, then the type checking is checking the option for you because you have to do narrowing to use it, like as just a string, right? Or undefined. Well, it's it is only bad <laughs> depending on like. What are the functions that you are calling and I, what they exact? But... I'm not completely sure why I'm doing this think, structure. I don't clone. think. Uh, oh my what? God. No, 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 no I was just, like, just thinking. Adding new, I think it's a terrible idea though, because, well, no means nothing. Like, I don't know what yeah, I think means. it makes the code less readable. But... No, no, but regarding how you are using the option, the same thing. The type check will like check for you, especially if you have some configuration specific. Well, I don't think you need in this case. Anyway, I think we can try... Dude, Let's is, read this, this function, is this right? only this? And I did that just for laws? Because I'm starting to believe that's the case. Yeah. I think uh... Oh no, you have new G there. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see. You're getting new G out of G. And then using new G in this yeah, place? But... And then in yeah, this place, you can just mutate G, right? The local reference of G and send it back. Yeah. No, but uh, that, the mutation is actually pretty okay because this mutation yeah, is only yeah, adding a projectile. Yeah, but here's, but here's what I'm saying. If it's a local mutation, I don't know why, like, be ideological about it. Like, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. You are not getting it. We cannot use a structured clone. And yeah, if we can't, we can't then we cannot use. No, no, no. But he's not talking local about that. Yeah, no, he's not talking about that. He's talking Which that one, if then? he's talking that if you're doing mutation, uh, oh man, uh, I already heard a, a proper name of that. But it is like when you do mutation that is encapsulated with in the way that it makes the function pure externally speaking. Like, like sure, I, I just said that today, but yeah, you said what that. is the one that you are saying? No, because like, which new one G, are you referring to? New G was being used in here and in here, and it was literally a copy of G. And then what I'm thinking is that we don't have the necessity of doing that structured clone because we can just mutate G itself. That doesn't even need to be a mutation. Yeah, that's not it. a local mutation. Reassignment. Yes, yes, that's only a reassignment. I, I, I see what you mean. And I think that's already oh. fixed. We don't need yeah, the... I don't, if, I don't know if TypeScript handles it like that. Probably not. But... Yeah. But now we need but to go the to the thing. bad one, which is this one. <laughs> This one actually requires the mutation. Uh, it doesn't. No, but... it does. In the way that it's constructed, it does. We're going to have to reverse the what photo What I mean, it's filter. just like, it doesn't in the sense that 
it can be without, right? Oh if yeah, we if, change you re that. if you replace the it's code with future. So let's but do that. Are you sure you changed the other like already? Like yeah. correctly? Yeah. Update with action. There is no structure clone here anymore. We are using. No, no. What? It is this working properly? Because oh, if you are doing g equals to this, why don't you just return? Because I need because the return needs to happen here. Mm. How so? Oh, because, because regardless of the if, of those, I need to yeah. update the coordinates. Yeah, the g reassignment is just in one in specific, right? The yeah. Others, yeah. Right. Okay, I will just trust this. Okay, so structure oh, clone. Now we need down. to replace the fold with the filter. What is this supposed to do? This is supposed to eliminate the projectiles that hit somebody and the somebodies would theoretically also need to die. Oh, dude, that's... that's, <laughs> that's uh, but these would be much easier with IDs because you could just collect the IDs and then filter all the IDs out. Hmm, collect all the IDs from where? Uh, well... <laughs> So, you are doing a for each in all the things, you still have to do some horrible check, but then what you can do is you have an array of IDs and you just push the IDs there. And then what you return is the game state filtered by those IDs on oh, the enemies okay, and on okay. the projectile. I think I see what you mean. I think I see what Oh, you mean. shit, but then projectiles would need an ID for themselves. <laughs> Not only the, <laughs> the user ID, but also ID for themselves. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh no, but we already have the index, right? <laughs> yeah, we already have the index. We can just do that yeah. with the indices. Yeah, but we didn't implement here yet the, own, the ownership ID. We didn't implement that yet. Um, so let's think how can well, we do this. We should if that. we want to avoid the shoot yourself, right? But we can do that without. And for now, use indices of the arrays to know which things we have to eliminate. Oh, that's actually not a so bad idea. We just save the IDs, the indices. Yes, the my ones. only question is how will you use those IDs to filter the thing, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, <laughs> that that's the thing. I'm not sure how. What's the do we good have, way to do, do that? Do we have an operation here? Does anybody know if you have an operation of a difference between uh, arrays? Of course you don't, man. That's that's not MATLAB. That's <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Haskell has it. I'm pretty sure F# -sharp has it as well. Yeah, that's yeah. not Haskell. That's JavaScript. Oh, you yeah, have stats. so much weird stuff on the .NET. But anyway, uh, look in the <laughs> FP, look in the FP library. Maybe this. Okay. Maybe they have less that would stats. be a good excuse for maintaining it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go. I'm going to the documentation right now. Let me actually put this in the other monitor. Yeah, this. Yeah, there. So go oh one. no, I already hold. No, I already know how to do it, man. Go. Uh, so it is pretty fucking simple. It is. Yeah, like it is just a, oh, dude, that's great. This and it is like, just a map. Why bother, why bother resisting? Like, I, I look at this and I get sad, man. Like, why bother adding like stuff like IO? Like, dude, TypeScript. Uh, so it, take a look, Lemus. So you have an array of the IDs, right? That you want to filter the things out by. And then what you do is map. Well, filter actually, and in the filter, you receive the element, oh, the no. ID. No, 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 no. Right? Yeah. You're gonna what do, do you like a, a, filter. a filter with a contains? Is that your, what you're proposing? Huh? No, no, that's a filter I. It's mm -hmm. because on each iteration of the filter, you receive the element and in each index, and in which index he's in, on the array. You see? So we're talking about filter mm -hmm. with index. I guess. Filtery. Yeah, but that's already a function that exists. Don't use this fucking shit. It is just filter. That's literally it. Okay, Wait, so the normal filter already has a ID, like a, it a, does. Sorry, an in? the index. Yes. 
Uh, the only thing that you do is because you need two different arrays, right? One for the bullets and the other for the, Can't you the players. Wait, wait, wait. So the the oh, no, you, no, the no. the array that we need, we're gonna use, we're gonna collect to see uh, if things got hit and stuff. This is the array of projectiles that you're gonna remove, right? The indices, but yeah. The indices, but yeah. Oh, what? dude, folks, it's already 10.44. I need to go. Really? Man, I need to... We are way past the time, aren't we? No, we are two hours and five minutes. Yes? Okay. But because we started later, right? Yeah. I think yeah, we should, so we should finish trying to make to. this better. You can go, Magate, if you have to leave, no problem. I can finish this with Nata. Well, I can stay a bit more. I just need to finish like some pages on my book. Because... Well, I made a promise to Belen. Yeah, Wait a second, reading a book or writing a no, book? No, no, reading, reading, and I'm writing. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was that close, that interesting. was close. <laughs> <laughs> it's not today, right, Maggie? Not today. Not today, not today. Yeah, not okay. Today. Okay, so uh, uh, I have a problem. Uh, I have a question, Ata. So? Uh, we, got, we need to collect the IDs, is that right? Yes, in two different arrays. In two different arrays. Which arrays? One for the bullets, other for the... Entities? Oh, three actually, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let's start yeah. with the entities right now. Let's just remove the bullets for now. Okay. Yeah, but I mean three in regarding uh, enemies, players, and... You yeah, see? yeah, yeah. The three projectiles, entities, projectiles... Although, you don't need players. For now, you just have one. No, no, no. Right? You need you need players, yes, because you sh you can die in the game. Uh, no, no. The only thing that you happen is you have a flag saying was hit. You see. Instead of an array of IDs of users, because you just has you only has you only have one user. I'm very confused. Let's try to be simple here. What Let's do I implement need to and you will with? understand. What do I need to iterate with and save? Okay, so step by step. Uh, Create an uh, array of IDs for the projectiles that will vanish. Okay, so let's uh, remove projectiles. Yeah, that's that's a const. A const? Yes. I have no idea where you're going then. Okay, go. Uh, so yeah, remove the projectiles. And then what we need to do is... Oh, then that's the double four, right? Yeah. For every projectile, yeah. you will go on every. No, oh, no, but that doesn't change. But it is a much better code now. You no, no, see. no. But how is this a const? That's what I don't understand. No, no, that's a const because you can do remove it projectiles dot push, and that's not mutation on remove it projectiles. That's not a change on the pointer. That's the change on what the pointer is pointing to. Why? You're doing a const instead of a let in this case. That's my question. Because I will not change. Remove it projectiles. Remove it projectiles is a reference. I will change what remove it projectile points to. Oh, you see? Okay, okay. So this is an array I have of a pointers. const pointer, not a pointer to a const. Okay, so you're gonna have a, a, a array of pointers then. No, no, no. What I mean is, uh, remove the projectiles. Is a pointer, right? Sure. And it is pointing to a continuous like uh, piece of memory. This continuous piece of memory is mutable. The pointer is not. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, now you do the the for each, right? Uh, we're gonna do the four and do. If yeah, just want. comment all of this and let's write on top of it. We're gonna do a for each on top of what? Uh, on the bullets. So, for example. game state projectiles for each. Yes. Uh, and then inside that. <laughs> so we're yeah, gonna have and a projectile. Now, yes, and a projectile index. index. Yeah, you need to be projectile index because you will also have the user, the, well, the enemy index, right? I'm confused. Wait a second. Oh, you're talking about the name because you're going to have another for each inside. 
Yeah, are the bullets all together? Like the players? Yes, and they are. Yes, oh. they are. Yes, okay, but let's go. Uh, for now, just do a, a far out on the enemies. Uh, game state. Um, and enemies for each. For now, let's start with just vanishing with the enemies and vanishing with our bullets. Let's start, let's start just with that, right? Wait, repeat that. Uh, let's start just vanishing with our bullets and the enemies that they hit, right? Right? Okay, okay. Uh, oh, wait, we're gonna vanish the enemies as well? What? We're gonna yes. vanish the enemies, so we need another const here, no? Yes, yeah, yes, we do. Remove the enemies. Uh, okay. So, so now we need to use this function here. Yeah, for now, let's not assume the check-in from each... From whom is the bullet, right? So, was hit, you have the enemy Remove coordinate. enemies. Uh, Where did push. I... Yeah. I don't know why we are not just passing like the enemy itself, right? Okay, it's because they are different types than the user and that's also... Oh, that is a good case for an interface. Or something like it. But sure. Okay. Now that's the thing. So oh, yeah, wait, you push the enemy. Oh wait, don't want to push the, the enemy. I need to push the index. Yes. Yes. And also the projectile one, right? Yes. Remove... Uh, removed... Projectiles push and that's it. Now you just filter. That's easy. Um, um, oh, this hit. This was doing the hit for the checking for the hit of the player, but you're not doing that right now. now we are practically done. Now you need to do the filter. You said. So yes. game, uh, game state, uh, projectiles. So you like, yes, you like each. project. No, 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 not for each. You do like projectiles equals let or const in this case. Const projectiles equals. Const. Uh, like projectile new projectiles or something. Equals true. Updated projectiles equals true. And now you have the projectiles dot filter. Okay, so game state projectiles filter. Oh, sh. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but now that's the thing. Yeah, in that case, it would be uh, slow, right? Cause... Yeah, no problem for now. No problem for yeah, now. Yeah, but we can change to a set layer. Uh, yeah. So I guess you have a contains. Yeah. So it is a future with a contains. I was right. Cool. Yeah, that part indeed. Uh. uh so uh, oh, if yeah. no, no, no. Um, oh, you need the index, the index there also, right? Yes, projectile index. And then you're going to see removed projectiles dot contains uh, projectile index. Is that right? Yes, but I guess you need a negation, right? Like that? Yeah, but you need, yes. Yes, I guess that's right. Okay, and then we're gonna do it pretty much exactly the same for the updated enemies. Uh, enemies. And then in here, we're gonna have an enemy. And an enemy index. And then removed enemies. Contains enemy index so yeah the only thing is if we want to change for a set right that would be like easy and would be much faster i guess and then we no, need but to that's do a done return. just return with the new stuff uh game state with enemies uh i already forgot the notation again i always forget this <laughs> uh I like colon and the name right a colon, that's what I want. Colon, where? Here. Um, updated enemies, and then projectiles. Uh, updated projectiles. 
Dude, just take just just take a comparison with the old function, man. Like, come yeah, on. It's not that better. But... Uh, no, you are I'm... fucking kidding me. <laughs> no, I'm not. You cannot read the other one, dude. I was able to read multiple times, no problem. Yeah, not as fast as the used one. I can bet with you. Ooh. Um, e -force. So the question now is. Um. Remove Dang. projectiles implicitly has type. Oh, type annotation. Okay, so this is gonna be That's number. Bad. Oops. Actually, it's gonna be this. Number. Oops. Okay. So now the contains does not exist on type number that. Okay, mm. so how you do a contains? Contains in array. Includes. Thank you. Thank you oh. for changing conventions. When nobody asked for. Every language does that, Lemos. Uh, not really. If you have two languages that has the same name, that's just coincidence or inspiration. The, you don't have a, a grid on a bunch of okay, languages. Okay, now it's a moment screen. of truth. Refresh it. And it's broken. What is that? It is broken. Argument. Draw. Huh. Draw? Where is that? Hmm. Uh, where is what that? What? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Yeah, I don't understand. Okay, so go into draw. And are you using coordinates there somewhere? Oh, they are still fixed, dude. What mm, do you mean? That's not a problem. Uh, you are using enemy zero, but when it vanishes, you don't have enemy zero. Where is enemy zero? Oh, here. Uh, but it's yep. the issue, is it? We need to do another for Cause... each. Yes. What was the error again? Uh, when the enemies disappear, when the enemies mm -hmm. is killed, this statement right here doesn't make it stops make sen making sense. Oh, I see. I see it needs to be like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it actually it is not even this anymore. Yep. Yep, works. Wow, today was very productive. I'm very impressed. This, should, this to do is gone. Now the only thing that we need to do is for to later remove this. Um, um, have multiple fives if needed. Change the name. But this is minor stuff. Yeah. yeah, you need to update a lot that function for removing projectiles and enemies. Because they need the ID and shit to okay, avoid... Let's, let's actually uh, write that down. Update projectile presence. Okay, so go. Uh, so let me see. You need to include checks so you only remove enemies that were hit by a player bullet. Project, by a player projectile. Include checks for removing... Only removing... Enemies that were hit by a player. Yes. And also... Only count a hit on the player when it came from an enemy projectile. Uh, came from a, an enemy... Um, projectile. I a guess that's a... it, right? Yeah. Awesome. I'm very pleased with today's session. Today was great. Uh, this is still true. Good. Wait, wait. I think. Yeah, yeah can we already. change the type already? Like, of the... The projectiles, can't we just have like different arrays of projectiles? 
like user bullets and enemies bullets because can... that simplifies code a lot. I think we can do that. Maget, you were about to say something. I was just gonna say like I think it scales more like this. No. To do separate the separate. The fact that we can like implement new stuff faster. Oh yeah, no, this was much faster. Separate the projectiles from enemies and player. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who do this? <laughs> Is that like Sodin's thing? No, that's mine. <laughs> Rodo? <laughs> oh, because it's Rust, probably. Yeah. Oh no, that's that's bad. That's simple. Where is that? Li where is that? Yeah. Oh, that's probably JavaScript that is being generated, right? Uh, what? Where is the? Oh. The idea was I'll write an one in Emacs for me. Yeah, but where is this? <laughs> probably some dap, <laughs> some some dap. You see? Oh yeah, the dependency has this. <laughs> yeah, and it is on the build file. Oh. Okay, okay, that makes sense. You know what would be cool for your thing? What? Tutoring by extension and folder. A, you accept a rejects on your Rudu program. You accept the rejects and then you parse given the rejects. No. Wait, you mean instead of to do or for the kind of file? Yeah, like for example, you can pass something like task and then Rudu task and then instead of mapping to do's, it maps task. Yeah, cool. so I, I allow. Recently. Yeah, so I, I I would allow versatility of how people do the to dos. Yeah. But they would still have to be the same structure, right? Even yeah, though yeah, they have but, a different name. Yeah, but if you. Yeah, but that's to very easy in, in terms of. Thing? I don't know how I'm gonna. That's actually a very interesting problem. I would have to translate the rejects that you were typing to the rejects that I would be using in, in the lib. It could be a rejects. It could be. Just like changing the it word. It's like just a string, part dude. Of the rejects, but yeah. No, if it's just a string, that's okay. It's just it changing the parser combinator thing. Or you could do this in Perl in two lines. But that is nice in the sense of, okay, collect the fix me, collect me the to do with yeah. priority one yeah, or I something. I believe I, I at least did this. Yeah, it's panicking right now. But my next step would be to create like a dot .rudo file. And then instead of rereading re everything, the application would just show to you the one that is in there. And it's so it cache, would, right? It would have cache. And if you do like catalog upstream, it would do the same with the GitHub issues. And it would also push the to do's that are within the dot do file to the GitHub. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it was very pleasant to run, to learn how Rust do the command line thing. So this is how it's being done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very cool to learn that. Anyway, I think now we are almost two hours, two hours and a half, and today was great, folks. Thank you. Great, so Sirvon. By the way, what are we doing next session? Okay, because next. Because we didn't the NWM. Oh, next session will be the NWM for sure. Wait, isn't that we finished? Need to, we need to sync first. We need to read something. I yeah. don't know many. Yeah, I'm we need. Yeah, the, the problem with the NWM is that we we need to do archaeology. <laughs> what does that mean? Dude? That means that we need to understand the the dialect of very 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 old people. So uh, again, to, what to, do you mean? We need to be very uh, up to date that. with the lib xlib uh, dot h yeah. and dot c. So oh, know design. how the lib works. That's it. We want, okay, let me give you the what's the problem. We want to do tiling. We don't know how to spawn windows, so we can organize them into like. So just say we need to know how to use yeah. the fucking library. That's not archaeology. It is oh, archaeology. It is you are trying to understand old language. Yeah. Man, it either has a documentation or it has only the code. In both cases, you it just look. Archaeology. In both cases, it is archaeology. <laughs> in this case, yes. Sure. Yeah, and you are <laughs> some kind of Indiana Jones of coding. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I was talking about Benet. Like, we're going to make a company in the future that's going to be a Bronze Age civilization. And we were talking about how they decode the linear B. 
Just look, Lemus. A linear B. What the fuck is that? It's dude? a language, man. Linear B. Uh, linear B. Linear B, yes. So basically, here's the thing. Like, on the Bronze Age, there's the collapse of the Bronze Age. So basically, right. all the civilizations of, of the Earth basically broke. Like, it's this moment that... Basically, like, there's, like, very, like, well-developed civilizations that they just crumble out of nowhere. And it was a mystery, like, uh, for a lot of people, there are some theories about this today. Economical theories and so on, but um, the point is, uh, they had, like, their languages, right? And one of them is Linear B. And then Linear B was a weird language from Crete in the island, in the... Atlantic in the Mediterranean, you know, like in Crete, in Greece, like there's yeah. Crete between Egypt and Greece, yeah, and Turkey. So there was like this people population. Uh, there were this population there uh, of the Minoans, and then like Linear B was this undeciphered language. So for example, we just know how to decipher uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs because of the uh, Rosetta Stone. It was a stone that had like the the same writing into i think akkadian i i'm not sure the the languages that were in there but it was a uh, stone that had like three languages differently and one of them were basically hieroglyphs so they could basically translate by doing, okay so if it means the same thing then this means x this means y you see mm -hmm. so they could be called egyptian like old egyptian language uh, but with like linear A and linear B, it was different because there was no language that was very approximate to it. The closest was Greek, which is like very, very, it's like an ancient language of ancient Greek. So <laughs> it is like, and, and that was the problem because the alphabet is different, like it's a different yeah. culture. So it's very di weird. Yeah. And then, like, a dude, like, pe most of the, the archaeologists, they couldn't decipher. And then a random dude from the from the United Kingdom, he went there, like, he was a hobbyist. So he was, like, a, a hobbyist. We are uh, live still, just for you to know. Okay, that, that's just an interesting story. Anyway. No, no, no so you, can, you can go on. It's just <laughs> making sure that you were aware. No, no, that's fine. Uh, he was a hobbyist um, uh, linguist. And then he went there, and then he thought, okay what were these people thinking so he basically like started looking around the island and said okay these people would probably start thinking this way because they would look at the stars and name it this way so he basically got things that wouldn't change so for example uh, a star constellation like that thing wouldn't change like they would observe to the skies and see like uh uh, or other names of the places in Crete. Like, okay, this place here probably didn't change the name because y you know there's like less variance between names even if a so civilization collapses, right? You're not going to stop naming your city your city. Uh, yeah. And then like, he basically just like with these assumptions, putting himself in the mind of a ancient, ancient Greek, he deciphered the thing like a, a total amateur. That was really, that's a really interesting story. But anyway, that's, that's cool. It. Yeah, I'm gonna finish the recording now. Uh...